Hi there, my name is Michael Fudge and this is another SQL screencast. In this screencast we'll be discussing the SQL aggregate operators and clauses that you can add to the select statement to uh, group and summarize your data. The aggregate operators are count, sum, average, min, and max. I don't think they need a lot of explanation so we'll just get right into it. When we're all done, we'll put it all together with everything we've learned so far about the select statement. Let's start with a real simple example and work our way up to some more complicated ideas. So sometimes you might want to know how many employees, for example, work in FudgeMart. We could use the count operator for that. This select count star from FudgeMart employees will give us a list of employees, list of rows in the employees table. There are 34 rows. We can also use column aliasing. Make this look a little better as employee count. And we get 34 employees. Likewise, we could use something uh, like this to find the average hourly wage for the employees in the table. So the average wage is um, $15 and a penny. Okay, that's great. Now what if you wanted to see the average employee wage for each department? You might say select employee department, comma, average employee hourly wage from FudgeMart employees. When you execute this statement, you'll get an error. And the error says column FudgeMart employees department is invalid because it is not contained in an aggregate function or used by the group by clause. And the reason this comes up is for any column that you're trying to select when you have an aggregate, um, if it's not part of the aggregate function, you have to use it in the group by clause. So down here I should say group by employee department. And if I execute that, now I get exactly what I wanted, which is a list of departments and the average wage of employees in each department. Notice here that our, that our output is an aggregation of the original rows. That is, there's only six rows in the output. That's not because the output's been filtered. It's because the output's been summarized. So this is a true modification of the select statement that no longer deals with the individual rows in the output, but a summarization of those rows. Let's suppose I wanted to sort this so I can say order by uh, average wage. Now I can say uh, average wage as a column alias because the order by clause is one of the last things that gets processed by the select statement. So in essence, when you do an order by, you're sorting by the output of the other parts of the statement. So that's why the select statement knows about this alias, whereas the where clause would know about this alias, as we'll see in a, in a future example. Um, so let me add one more thing to this. Let's order by average wage in descending, highest to lowest, and then let's say show me the uh, the top one. So let's see what the highest paid department is. Customer service. Uh, you could also do something fancy like maybe you want to see the top 50%. Uh, okay, so this will give you the upper half, if you will. So customer service, electronics, and hardware are all in the upper half. Um, of employee departments. Okay, let's continue on with another scenario. So if I uh, execute this SQL statement, it'll give me a list of all the vendors. And you can see that uh, I have a bunch of vendors in here. Now one thing I might want to know is um, how many products each vendor um, supplies. So for example, I want to see exactly what you see in the output, but I'd like to see an additional column that lists out a count of the number of products that each vendor supplies. Well, to do this, I'm going to have to join uh, vendors uh, to products. So, 
let's say um, select uh, vendor ID vendor name vendor phone and account of the product ID from Fudge Mart vendors join Fudge Mart products on vendor ID equals product vendor ID. Now if I execute this again I'm going to get an error and the reason is because these particular columns up here that aren't part of the aggregate clause I need to specify what I'm doing with those. Am I grouping by them or am I grabbing the first one am I trying to average them what so in this case I want to group by the columns that aren't part of the aggregate so group by and pretty much going to group by these babies here grab them I'll drop them in there and execute that and there's my list I have for example um, Microsoft sells five products and Levi sells four products. One thing I might want to do is put a nice alias on count uh, as count of products. And then execute that again. And now you get a nice column up here that says count of products. It gives you another example of some things that you can do with the SQL aggregate clause and some joins to really kind of um, bring your queries together and answer a lot of questions about uh, your data. Okay, for a final example, let's fool around with uh, FudgeMart employees and the uh, FudgeMart employees timesheets table. If I execute this, you'll see I get a big wad of data here that represents um, each week that this particular employee punched in that many hours. So maybe what I want to do is for each employee, I'd like to calculate their uh, total hours worked in the year 2006. So let's just filter this on 2006. So I would say select everything from timesheets where um, year of timesheet payroll date is 2006. So that gets me just the 2006 stuff. Okay, looking good. Then what I'd like to do is sum. I'd like to timesheet oops, employee ID and then sum the time timesheet hours as total hours. Okay, we're getting there. So this is going to get me, i uh, got to add my group by, got a group by timesheet employee ID. I execute that and what I'll get is for each employee in the timesheet table, I get their total hours worked. We should probably spell hours right. That would be nice. Now, it would be great to show their name, not just employee ID. So to do that, I'm going to have to join up. I'm going to have to join up the Fudge Mart employee table. Join Fudge Mart employees. And on timesheet employee ID equals employee ID and when I do that I can add in um, employee last name employee first name okay so now I'm selecting the, uh, the ID last name and first name and the total hours and I better group them by ID last last name 
and first name. Okay, let's see what we got here. Now I have an employee ID. I know that was natural and he made 852 hours. I have uh, Chuck it up, 790 hours. I have leave me home, uh, 2,220 hours. Now let's add in their wage per hour. So keeping on with it, let's add in uh, employee hourly wage. Add that in. And of course, since we're not aggregating it, we need to add it to the group by. It's getting to be a big statement. This is what happens when you build real-world SQL statements. All right, I'm going to have to break this up a bit more. If it's on the screen. All right, let's see what we got now. So now I've got employee name, how much they make an hour, how much they've made in a year or how many hours they worked in a year. So now I want to add another column that shows me how much they made in a year. Okay. So what I want to do is say employee hourly wage times the sum uh, as annual total pay. Okay. And we execute that, and we get hourly wage, total hours, and then this is a multiplier of hourly wage times total hours, it represents the total pay. Now, what's interesting here is notice how I had to repeat this expression. I couldn't just use total hours like I did in the group by in the uh, order by clause before, and that's because uh, these statement, th this part of the select statement. Um, is occurring during the row selection process, so it doesn't know about the column aliasing. Only the um, order by clause knows about the column aliasing. So, for example, if I wanted to uh, order by the total pay, I could just say order by total pay uh, descending. We'll put the, the big bucks earners at the top. I can say that because, again, order by... Um, order by is affected after the row selection. We execute that. Oop. Uh, execute that. Okay, so there you go. Of course, I'm at the top. Big wage earner, right? Pulled down six figures. <laughs> okay, our final step here is what if you want to take this existing report and only show the employees that have a total hours greater than 2,000 hours? Uh, this is where it becomes a little challenging because you can't use where since you don't know what the sum is at the time the where clause is occurring. Again, you want to actually run another where clause on the output after you do the group by. So the way we do that is with the having clause. And it would be something like this. Having sum timesheet hours greater than, let's say greater than or equal to 2,000. Notice here how I, I can't say um, total hours up here. I have to use the expression that represents total hours. Again, because the only part of the select clause that knows about column, ali column aliases is the very last part, the order by clause. All right, so let's run this so you can get a sense for what we're up against. And there you have it. And there's only 22 rows. And if you look, all of them are more than 2,000 hours. Well, that's enough for now. That concludes our lesson on how to use uh, the group by, the having, and the SQL aggregate operators to summarize your data. This is a very powerful um, example of how you can use SQL. And it's, it's used a lot in day-to-day in -day operations to summarize and report on the data that's in your tables. Thanks, and we'll see you again soon. Bye now.